الحفل الكريم إنها لحظة خالدة نشهد فيها توقيع هذه الوثيقة التاريخية بين رمزين من رموز السلام نشهد معكم الآن توقيع وثيقة الأخوة الإنسانية إعلان أبو ظبي أيها السيدات والسادة يتم التوقيع على ثلاث نسخ واحدة للفاتيكان Non-Muslim with the respectful clothing can come enter the mosque and enjoy while being quiet and respectful to the visitor and the same is for the synagogue and the church all the, all the doors are open Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rukopardash. The Lord is my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, who the house of David be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yahshua Rallam, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as, and still are, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the Abrahamic houses of worship that was built in Saudi Arabia. But before we get into that, let's read this. This is Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. 
Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Now, this ultimately is talking about Esau, Edom, and the uh, and the Edomites, right? The so-called Caucasian race. But what it also means is talking about the others who pretend to be following the Lord and doing it righteously, right? For example, here at the Abrahamic houses of worship, you have three man-made religions, okay? These are not things found in the Bible, right? Let's go off, let's go, go um, through them. You have Islam, right? Which basically started about 600 years after the Messiah came. And not only that, but they don't recognize Yahweh Shai as the Son of God, right? On the their um, grand on their grand mosque, on the uh, so supposed Temple Mount, which is really a Roman fort in Jerusalem, inside of that sacred mosque, right, the, under the dome of the rock, there on the wall it says, "God has no son," right? That's the true understanding of Islam, okay? Because you got to understand these are the is, these are the descendants, the Arabs are the descendants of Ishmael, the son of Abraham, who was rejected. Let me get the uh, family timeline, or the family tree, excuse me. So if we get the family tree, you gotta zoom in to when Abraham, right? You have Terah, then you have Abraham. And Abraham and Sarah, or Sarai, they had, uh, they had a child, right? And that child was called Ishmael, okay? And, or should I say Abraham and Sarai's servant, Haggai, or Hagar, had a child, and that child was called Ishmael. And from his, his Ishmael's line, he had 12 children who are the 12, which were referred to 12 princes, right? Whose kingdom of heaven is here upon the earth today. This is why these Arabs are extravagantly rich and are living, you know, in their in their heaven, right? They're able to do whatever they like. They're able to fly women in from all over the world, do abominable things to them. They're able to build oversized cars, uh, able to, you know, you know, own thousands and thousands of, of, of treasures and stuff, right? See, because why? Because this is their kingdom and they've been rejected, okay? Now, these Arabs, they not only are they trying to take their, their uh, kingdom now, but they also want to have the, the eternal kingdom, right? They want to be selected as a chosen people. And how's that? Well, they, you know, you had that man, Muhammad, come, right? And who basically took the, the Quran, rewrote re re it, right? Took out the name Yahweh, which was actually in the Quran before, and changed the name to Allah. Allah is simply Hebrew for all power, right? So, and he went on and, and, and modified it enough to where what modern Judaism today, or sorry, lucky, modern, modern Islam today is following what he taught. That being that basically that that uh, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, never came uh, as the son of man. He was just another prophet. And but and, and everything that he did was really of no, no, uh, ex nothing, no importance, right? And that they, because they are the seed of Abraham, can receive that promise, right? And, and, and be ushered into the kingdom of heaven. Well, they're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven, but as servants, okay? They're going to serve us Israelites, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans. And they're going to go into captivity. And why is that? Well, because they were not selected. They were rejected, okay? Now, next, you have, you have the, uh, the, 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 synagogue in there right and the synagogue comes from when you go down to abraham and sarai they had isaac and isaac and rebecca had two sons jacob who is where the the 12 tribes of israel the people who were chosen by god came from but then also you had esau okay and esau uh is is who you would refer to today as the so-called caucasian race well esau his first grandson right the first heir of Esau, right when it goes from uh, um, uh, from Esau and his wife Edda, well, they had Eliphaz, and Eliphaz slept with his father Esau's uh, concubine Timna, 
and they had a son called Amalek. Okay, and Amalek, from him come the uh, Amalekites, who fame, which one of the famous Amalekites are Agag, the same Agag who sent the prophet Samuel hewn to pieces, cut him up, cut him up into pieces, right? But also you have Haman, and also from Haman you have all his sons and stuff, right? And also his lineage. But mo for the most part, today the 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 uh, Amalekites would be the people who you would refer to as the so-called Jews, who would be worshiping in that house of synagogue there at the Abrahamic house. Now, not only was Edom Edom rejected, right? But also, definitely Amalek was rejected, right? And Amalek right now, currently Esau, this is his kingdom. This is why these Edomites, they rule the entire world, okay? This is their kingdom. Now, after that, you got the the, uh, the Catholic, right? The Catholic uh, religion, which for the most part, it's all Edomites, right? That, that rule in, in the uh, Catholic church, right? So it's them and it's all gonna be a lot of these other races which are not of, uh, of, of the chosen line, okay? Now, that being said, these people have decided to, to come together and to put aside all their, you know, petty man-made differences uh, in their doctrine and basically, uh, you know, come together to work to form a one world religion, right? And I made a video about this about six months ago and uh, you could actually see we're going to watch a, a little bit part about that video that actually shows how all the religions of the world are now coming together to create this one world religion and this one world religion ultimately and secretly is going to be worshiping satan right lucifer lucifer being the so-called caucasian race right these edomites right now how are they going to do that well let's go ahead and uh, watch this video that that I came out close to about half a year ago, and spot and, and uh, showed it to Joachim. But here here it is again for any of Joachim that missed it. It was called Chrislin. The NWO religion is here. More steps towards the one world religion have just taken place on September 14th and 15th, 2022, with Catholicism and Islam pretty much coming together and say, yeah, we worship the same God and we're brothers and sisters, just different paths to a different God. This is all falling under the umbrella of the uniting of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, of course, but not the real Christianity. It's Catholicism that's being united under this one world religion. The big event that took place on September 14th and 15th was at the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, and it concluded on last Thursday. But before I get into that, I'll briefly just touch on and remind people of the Abrahamic family house being built in Abu Dhabi, where there's religious, it's a religious center for Catholics, Muslims, and Jews to all come together and worship all through the Abrahamic religions there at this one thing. The reason this is important is because 2 Thessalonians 2.4 tells us that the Antichrist will demand the worship of himself and his image from everybody. And anyone who doesn't worship him, these people will die actually. They will become martyrs because the only people who won't worship him will be true believers in Jesus Christ, which is not mentioned by Pope Francis at any of these big meetings. So let me read a little bit from this article about it. The world religions leaders today adopted the human fraternity document signed by His Eminence, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, Dr. Ahmed al Taib and His Holiness, Pope Francis, their name, not mine, of the Catholic Church in Abu Dhabi in 2019. And this came during the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, which concluded on Thursday. Some highlights from the World Congress of Religions. We note that pluralism in terms of differences in skin color, gender, race, language, and culture are expressions of the wisdom of God in creation. Religious diversity is permitted by God, and therefore any coercion to a particular religion and religious doctrine is unacceptable. So, as you can tell, they're not saying here at these at these events that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the only way to heaven, because that would contradict Islam and Judaism. So it's it's uniting, everybody's giving up 
the truth here. They're all just coming together to get along to give up the truth, which is that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone. Back to the article it says, we recognize the importance and value of the document of human fraternity for world peace and living together between the Holy See and Al-Azhar al-Sharif. And then they mention two different documents that were resolved and signed into place by the UN General Assembly, as well as the Makkah Declaration adopted in Mecca in 2019. And these call for peace, dialogue, mutual understanding, and mutual respect among believers. So it's really the uniting of all these religions under the fact that we need to coexist together. And yes, of course, we need to coexist together. But the problem here is that they're starting to aim it towards we serve the same God. We worship the same God. You know, these Abrahamic religions are just different expressions of God to different people. And that's an absolute lie. The Jewish people are stuck in the old covenant, not accepting the new covenant. Islam is clearly, the Quran was written 600 years after the Bible, and they're clearly ripped off stories Muhammad ripped off and manipulated to create his own religion in the same region from the same stories. I mean, Muhammad even demanded that the original manuscripts for the Quran be destroyed. Why would he demand that? Because to cover it up, obviously. So the one truth is found within the biblical text alone, within the old and the new covenant mixed together, the new covenant salvation through Jesus Christ alone. So really it was this document of human fraternity. It was signed by the Pope and this grand Imam and adopted at the seventh Congress of leaders of the world in traditional religions in Kazakhstan. It's the uniting of the world under a one world religion that the antichrist will be the head of eventually. A glimpse of the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion. Here's from Vatican news and I was reading through this article and noticed something interesting that Congress, the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion came to life in 2003 in the wake of the tragic September 11th attacks of the United States and following Pope John Paul II's second spirit of Assisi meeting in 2002. So here's just another thing that came out of the September 11th attacks. Pretty interesting to note that. Worth noting about this interfaith meeting is that it took place within a pyramid. Kind of strange that that's their building of choice. Also, Pope Francis said that his goal for this meeting was peace and unity, of course. Very similar to what we know in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, peace and security is what they'll be saying and then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape and that's the whole point really of this whole meeting really and this whole uniting of these religions together not that we shouldn't get along and not that we should be out killing each other or something but the fact that we're there trying to unite under unite everybody under peace and security that's exactly what the bible says they'll be doing because it's dropping the truth that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation, which is the true love and peace that people need to come to realize, and just accepting everybody's false doctrines and false teachings for peace and safety, and that will cause sudden destruction. Pope Francis also said at this meeting that the best way to stop religious extremism is not through following the teachings of Jesus Christ, but actually through political democracy. So just enforcing the fact that what the Antichrist will have, which will be the one world government, one world religion. And again, Pope Francis does not mention the truth that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone, but in fact says this, and this is from Vatican News on the article called Pope in Kazakhstan Religions Key to Building World Peace and Understanding in reference to this meeting that took place. It says, in his speech to the Congress, the Pope began by addressing everyone as brothers and sisters in the name of the fraternity that unites us as children of the same heaven. He noted that before the mystery of the infinite that transcends and attracts us, the religions remind us that we are creatures, not omnipotent, journeying towards the same heavenly goal. I mean, out of his own mouth. I mean, the fact that people who are Catholics don't see that this guy's pushing for one world religion is insane. I mean, it's absolutely clear as day that this is what he's pushing for. Saying we're all going to the same heavenly goal. The, that Muslims who actually have written on the Dome of the Rock building in there in Jerusalem actually says God has no son. And so they want to unite Catholicism with people who say God has no son because it's clearly written clear as day in the Bible that you have to acknowledge Jesus as the son of God in order to find salvation through him. So there you have it, right? That's what this whole... Uh, Abrahamic houses of worship are all about it's the coming together of the world religions and, and basically all putting aside their their small differences to basically come together to 
to worship the same uh, hu uh, humanist doctrine, okay? Because this is ultimately what these devils want to do. And in that video, I just want to clarify where it talks about 2 Thessalonians about that he exalted himself. This is ultimately talking about the Edomites, the so-called Caucasian race, which really are the ones behind all of this, right? And in the video where it said that ultimately the Antichrist would be in charge of this new world religion, what that really means is that it's not just going to be one particular, the Antichrist, right? But it's going to be the Antichrist system, right? Because even back in the day of the Messiah, he said that there are many Antichrists, okay? That, so, so just like back then, today, there are many Antichrists in the world, people who are leading you away from the truth of the Bible. Now, these people here, these world uh, religion leaders are all devils, right? They're all, you know, following man-made doctrine, right? This is Matthews 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And there you go. And that's exactly what these people are doing, right? Not only did they say, or did the Pope say that, uh, you know, that he didn't mention really, you know, the Messiah, right? Or did he say that they're all worshiping the same God? But he said that they're all marching towards the same heavenly goal, right? There is no heavenly goal for these devils, right? The, the like I said, the Arabs, the Ishmaelites, there. This is their heaven. The the Amalekites and the Edomites. This is also their heaven. Okay. And what is their heaven? Their heaven, their their true heaven, is what they're attempting to do now, right? Bring forth this one world order with a one world religion, which is ultimately the worship of them, right? Like Pope Francis says, through political democracy. Right? This is Joel 2 and 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh Bashem Shai, your power, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So you see, those people over there can create as many Abrahamic houses as they like, but ain't gonna do a hill of beans to to provide them any sort of salvation right now that all is being done to deceive the masses around the world because what they're hoping is that though you're going to have a lot of people around the world basically falling away from religion and they're, they're basically going to take the what remains of man-made religion combine it and in the in the far future this is simply going to be what is left as far as religion right they're going to get rid of all these other different religions and it's only going to be one religion this religion is going to ultimately worship the a state right the, the the world government the new world order okay but again it doesn't matter what they do because again the lord is with us israelites and none else as it tells you in the scripture this is isaiah 14 and 1 for yahweh bashem yahushai will have mercy on jacob and will yet choose israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right? And right here it's talking about the strangers are talking about all the Israelite foreigners, right? All the Israelites, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, right? Who who at one point thought they were just Mexicans, Italians, you know, Japanese, Chinese, whatever, right? But ultimately, when they trace back their lineage or their spirit just, you know, resonates with this truth, th those are going to be the, the Israelite foreigners who have come out of every nation speaking every tongue, okay, found in Revelations, okay? And the thing is, is that the Lord, is, He ain't going to choose no one world religion, fraternity at the Abrahamic house. He's going to destroy that place. Because why? Because He's going to yet choose Israel, right? The same people the Lord brought out of Egypt is going to be the same people uh, that he's going to provide his salvation for. And that's us, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, and those whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, right? So I just wanted to bring this out, Rocky. I wanted to show you what these devils are up to over there in, in um, the Levant area. 
So hopefully this video was edifying. Until the next time, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rukok, Dash, Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.